Welcome to the Humber Crew. I'm Tony. This is Sean. And today we're going to be going over our second set of monsters in uh, D&D Beyond, our homebrew monsters, for our month of October. I know, I know, we're supposed to do one every week. We fell a little bit behind, but we picked out some, uh, some pretty good ones today for these three, and we want to make sure these authors get uh, credited for them as well. Yeah, yeah. I think we have a nice little bunch of uh, monsters that we've picked out here. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all pretty different, uh, but they all still kind of follow this theme. Well, they're all undead, first of all. Uh, which, yeah, you we know, figured we tomorrow is Halloween. We have to do undead at least once before we do this. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Last time, what did we do? We did, uh, like, golems and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's It feels like it's been so long. But um, uh, today we're going to do some more traditional... And uh, one of them not traditional, you know, kind of more spooky Halloween themed ones. Yeah. Now, do we? I'd say we start with the bog mummy. Yeah, that, that's a good I, one to start with. It's one of my favorites. Um, now this, this is a little different from a regular mummy. Um, I mean, even just by the setup, you're mm -hmm. you know you would mostly find this in some kind of like swamp, um, or, or a bog kind of environment, obviously. Um, but Thus, it has the some bog mummy. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it's in the name. But it has a lot of cool features. I mean, it has a typical undead stuff. You know, it's immune to like acid, necrotic poison. It's some, or um, and then also being charmed and being exhausted. Um, however, it has a quality that we liked in our last video, where it has this acidic body feature. Right. So anything that hits it with a melee weapon, with that, anything within five feet of it takes two d six acid damage. That's there. We thought that was like the first thing we saw, and we went, "Oh, okay, this is like that uh, that acid golem that we mm -hmm. had." Yeah, last yeah, time. very similar. Um, however, this one's got a couple of really interesting features on it, and I think all of the monsters that we're talking about today have one thing in common, and that's that they have this grasping of the characters kind of feature, or doing things to the characters that are permanent changes. Um, the bog mummy has uh, two different things that are like that. First of all, it's got one that's for itself. And that is, uh, if it's outside of water, mm -hmm. and if it ends its turn outside of water and what have you, it starts losing dexterity and AC every turn until it goes back into the swamp. Yeah, and, and I like this because, I mean, sure, you can kind of maybe trick it to leave the swamp or something, but it's probably not going to do that. But the first thing I thought is there's a spell called Create and Destroy Water. Yeah. And, like, honestly, people usually don't have that spell ready to do because, like, no. it, it seems uh, almost kind of cleric always goes, well, yeah, I don't I guess I right. can create water, but, you know, what's well, the I point? Well, I just make, like, 50 pounds of food and water because, like, everyone just loves bringing that one around. Yeah. But <laughs> you can actually use that spell or get creative, like, put some right. fire in there or, like, make the water go away. So it's kind of a cool, neat little feature. And it, it's nice that it has this, this disadvantage, this thing that happens uh, because of you changing the environment, which you don't see a lot. So we, I really commend this guy for creating him. We'll list all the creators below uh, when, we, when we go over each one. Um, but the other thing is this uh, empathic body. So any, uh, any monster or any person this guy's attacking, uh, they can see... Um, well, actually, I guess this goes along with the dissolving touch, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, it's got two attacks. One's an empathic body, and the other one's its dissolving touch. Dissolving touch, if, they, if you fail the con save with it, you're ended up... Uh, your, your hit points get reduced. You can't regain hit points, and you take... Uh, the loses, D4. Yeah, you take an extra D4 of acid damage for every acid hit that you take. So it's just this kind of thing where your your body is decomposing. Mm -hmm. um, but that lasts until the Bog Mummy's next turn, to the end of its next turn, which is kind of cool. So you got one full round of taking extra acid damage from it, which it does. So mm -hmm. that <laughs> creates a, a worse thing, which then goes into this empathic body, which is um, you know basically a wisdom saving throw with it. And you lose two dexterity, and you take two d4 acid damage, uh, plus that one additional if he's already hit you with the dissolving touch. And to regain that dexterity, you have to complete a long rest. So it's one of those things that's going to slow you down. The mummy actually bogs you down. Yeah, yeah. If anything, it's a good I, pun. I almost would have, uh, I almost would have made the saving throws dex just to keep stacking on and making the player really feel it. But um, losing two dex is kind of an interesting thing because, like, you know, if they're going to continue traveling. They're not going to get it back. They're going to keep being slow. Well, yeah, and think about that. If you're if you're getting slowed down by this mummy, you lose two dex, mm -hmm. right? And let's say it only hits you once or whatever, and you lose that two dexterity. Okay, fight's over. You're still going through the swamp. Who's to say there's not another mummy? Yeah. You go through and you hit on another mummy. Guess what? Your initiative roll is a exactly. little bit lower. You're going to get slower and slower. So it, right. it's a cool little feature that's in there. Um, there's not really a lot of monsters that actually deduct from skills because a lot of the time you know you're not going to in a good chance to utilize it 
But if you're in a swamp and you have these things, um, take advantage of you know reducing your player's stats. It's fun. Yep, definitely a lot of fun. Uh, that brings us to our next one. You're going to pronounce this one because... I'm not good at saying Oh, I always one. butcher these. No, it's okay. Um, so, I'd rather you butcher them than oh, me butcher Oh, okay, that's them. good. Um, so this is the Abertac. This Abertac. Is, this is, I'm assuming is what it, what that means. Abertac. Okay. Yes. Um, Sounds good. So, again, um, we were re- looking at the description of this one. It's basically, um, you know, from the description they said, it's like this villain or maybe this like this evil person, this character, mm-hmm. um, that has been brought back by Orcus because they feel as though that, like, they deserve to come back oh, and get yeah. a second chance. You're evil enough. You've you've raped and pillaged enough. You uh, you deserve to come back and get a second chance. But you're going to come back as an abhertech. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, they got a couple of interesting things. Sunlight sensitivity. Uh, so the wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. That they're going to basically fail this because they have disadvantage. Mm-hmm. But the withering aura. This is the one that you liked. On this. Yeah, so um, anything within 30 feet of it um, that isn't undead, you can't regain hit points. Um, it can't be revived um, or raised from the dead. And it can't be cured of poisons, curses, or fear. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, seeing as though this thing's only attack is life drain. Uh, so it's it's con- constantly reducing you in hit points. And imagine not being able to be revived or raised when you're around this thing. Oh, yeah. Your healer becomes virtually useless if you're within range of this within, thing. It's 30 <laughs> feet. It's, it's, you know, if you're if you come in for an attack, your your fighters, your your barbarians, anyone that's going to come in and hit it, um, they're stuck in that in that situation. Mm-hmm. If they, they're the most likely candidate to get the, the life drain attack done to them. Right. And this thing stacks one on top of the next. So you've got this aura around where it's affecting you like that, and then you've got the life drain attack, mm-hmm. which does the necrotic damage of 3d8 to right. you. For, and challenge level 5, mind you, which oh, is yeah. not even this is, that high. Yeah. Right. Um, but then it makes you make a con save. Then your hit point maximum is reduced by the amount equal to the damage that you took, and uh, the reduction lasts until it finished until you finish a long rest. So again, this is one of those things where it's taking that uh, that constant situation and carrying it forward to the next battle unless you get a chance to rest. Right. And um, then, uh, of course, the other feature that we didn't go over was called the grave. Right. So if someone is at zero hit points within thirty feet, again of this creature. Um, it deals another extra 2d8 necrotic damage with the life drain. So it's right. just another thing. And because that creature is within 30 feet of this withering aura, you can't res it. So imagine your your party, you've got this, you know, this horrible abertach here. It kills one of your party members. Now it's doing an additional 2d8 damage to you when you're when you're doing that. It's got 5d8 plus 3 necrotic damage on the failed save, and that total goes off of your maximum hit points. If you hit zero, you're also dead. Now you've got two that are there. Yeah. So this thing just keeps getting bigger oh, and bigger. And I, worse I love and worse. it because it's misleadingly tough. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, the thing's only got 67 hit points. You think, oh, come on, 15 armor class, 67 hit points. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely a fun monster. I, I can't wait to throw this in yeah, somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's, yeah. it's a ton of fun. Um, the last one we're going to go over is something called a grasping coffin. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a bit of a flavor of uh, like a mimic almost, you know, in a way. Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's basically, it looks like a coffin. Uh, it has the false appearance trait. So mm-hmm. if it's motionless, you you just have no idea that it's actually alive. Um, but it has a, three other different features. Um, it has adhes- adhesive mulch. Um, so anything that's like actually inside of it um, has to make an escape check of a DC-13. Um, and then, of course, ability checks to made to escape this also has disadvantage. So basically, if you're inside this, then you're already kind of stuck you're, in this. You're sticky. stuck in there. You have to make that uh, escape check of uh, 13 or higher, and you have disadvantage on it. Yeah. So it's, it's a harder grapple. This thing really, like, clings to you. Um, I noticed, I just noticed something about it, too. Look at its armor class. It's 14 natural armor, 12 without the lid. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Um, but the damage transfer is neat. So let's mm-hmm. say you get sucked into this thing and you're in there now. What happens? Well, I mean, once you're in there and your party's like, oh, well, I'm going to obviously save my party member. Right. Um, if you start hitting that thing, you're going to start hurting your party member that's stuck inside the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> He's in there. What are you going to do? So, yeah, you end up... Uh, it's got this damage transfer thing <clears throat> where half the damage dealt to it is actually dealt to the creature that's engulfed inside of it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it has grappler 
Yeah, of course. You Got to. Uh, grasping Vine, so it can reach out and grab you with that stuff. It attacks with bludgeoning damage. you got to make that escape of 13 or higher, or you become grappled, and then it can use its engulf attack. Mm -hmm. This is the one that I like with it, honestly. If you're looking at this here, uh, the engulf engulfs a medium or small creature grappled by it. If uh, it's already engulfing a creature, the engulf target is blinded, restrained, unable to breathe, and it must succeed on a constitution 13 or higher uh, at the start of its turn or take 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage from the vines wrapping around it. Not to mention you're inside the thing, so as your friends are, right, are it, whacking it, you're, you're getting, getting whacked. <laughs> um, but what's cool is that if you make the strength check, you remove the lid. Now, let's say you make the strength check, you remove the lid of the thing, you just drop this monster's armor class by two. Mm -hmm. So now it's down to a 12 armor class, uh, which is kind of neat. So you, you're actually able to, you know, kind of take this thing down a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So it's actually beneficial to you to get inside this thing and then make the checks to get out. Yeah, to make but it as a DM, you're probably going to put this in a very inconspicuous way, so that way you can... Th this, is, this is a good monster that you can use to kind of just like surprise your party as they're just walking around oh. like oh i want to investigate this box i love i love <laughs> the idea of having a crypt yeah like a false crypt kind of thing like they're going in to get the jewels out of this one crypt right mm -hmm. and then they see the beautiful golden coffin that's there and the moment that they they open this coffin the damn thing sucks them in and now they're in the coffin, and you have to fight the coffin with right, your friend. Right, exactly. Inside, and, which and would be kind of cool. This is going to be good for kind of an early level campaign. It has a challenge level rating of 3. It's mm -hmm. not that tough. It's only got 3 hit points, and it's 14 AC natural armor. Um, so you're probably going to want to get off the lid. Oh, right. <laughs> so you probably want to do this kind of early on in the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless, I think it's a really neat little tool to kind of have in your arsenal when you're yeah. doing all these undead creatures. Um, so again, I want to thank everyone that had come up with these um, awesome creatures. Um, the Abertac was done by... Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Save is Boredom. Save is bo oh, Save is Boredom. Wow. Save I can't speak today. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the Bog Mummy, we have to thank the Salty One. Well, who doesn't thank the yeah, Salty One? Yeah, I know. One? Yeah, that, I feel like I just that's what I call my <laughs> players every day. Um, and then for the Grasping Coffin, we have to thank Rexon for that. Yeah. Um, and all those links will be down below so you can take a look at all the full details. There's actually a lot more. And even with some of these, there's variants as well. So you can kind of take a look at that and use different of those uh, different rollings for those creatures. Yeah, we have the Avarice it. Sarcophagus as well. <laughs> yeah. That's on there. Uh, so definitely take that up. It's got uh, similar stuff, just grasping bandages instead of vines, which is kind of neat. Uh, they're just kind of flavored stuff. But that's what you can do with homebrew stuff, and that's the reason why we do this channel. Uh, if you like us, please like and subscribe us. Uh, well, I don't know. It's always over here somewhere. I always do that, and yeah, it never but appears they, they move it. Yeah, so wherever it's it. at, just click on it. <laughs> and definitely hit that notification button to be updated when we do release videos. We promise we'll be releasing more and more over the next couple of weeks. We have a lot of stuff to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been busy for good reasons, so yes. hopefully we have some exciting news coming up. Yes. Uh, we should be talking about that in a couple of weeks. Uh, please let us know if you have anything you'd like to review. And until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.